Hey guys, it's Brooke here. I just wanted to do a quick discussion about something that I have a lot of experience with and hopefully this will help somebody. I always tell people who have depression, anxiety, or you know, if they're going through something, don't be afraid to reach out to people for help because I know what it's like to try to prove to others that you're strong and you don't cry. I don't cry. I don't need any help. I'm independent. I, I, okay, I get it. I understand feeling like you're too strong of a warrior to get help. But from my experiences in my life, I know what it's like to be around people in your family and people you grow up with that they do not encourage getting help because of pride. Because they don't want people to be their people to feel embarrassed, like, oh, she's crazy and all this and call you names or whatever. I'll just tell you my experience. When I was younger, I grew up with my grandparents, and they were great people. I have nothing bad to say about them. Everyone liked them. They were good people. But other people in my family weren't so nice to me, and they treated me horribly. And when I was younger, I didn't realize I was going through trauma. Um, I didn't realize this till I was a little older when I was acting out, doing extremely outlandish stuff, especially on social media, that was completely out of character because of all this trauma going on and this, um, this um, mind control and, and trauma before I even knew what it really was. And um, when I was younger, I was not encouraged to get help at all. I, when I was getting bullied in school and... I was being treated horribly at, at home by certain family members and I was also being neglected by certain family members. I didn't realize I was in trauma and when I, came, when I was trying to reach out to people and say, hey, you know, um, I'm being bullied in school, I'm really sad, I'm really depressed, you know, when I was in elementary school I didn't have the greatest grades because I was just so miserable. I was depressed before I knew the term and the definition of depression and I didn't know why. I was told, oh, you're just lazy, you're a slacker, you're this, but when I actually grew up and studied this stuff and studied the spiritual aspect, I realized I was an extremely depressed and, and traumatized kid. And, nobody, and I kept trying to reach out to people to tell people that in my family and they just kept telling me, Oh, just ignore the kids in school. Oh, just don't worry about it. Just do your work. Just make sure you have a job. Just make sure you, you do well in your life. And that's good advice, but the reality is nobody taught me how to stand up for myself. No one taught me how to have to, to speak my mind, to go out and get, get help, get a counselor, you know, get a support group. No one told me about these things. They just thought, oh, if I wanted to seek counseling, I was crazy. You know how you'd be like, man, I think I need some therapy. Oh, you're crazy. You're psychotic. You're weak. You don't know how to deal with your own emotions. That's a weakness in you. You know those types of people that are pieces of shit? Well, I've been a lot of, around a lot of shitty people in my life. So I know all the bullshit. I know all the bullshit. And um, I, I didn't know what to do because I was in pain. But I, I was being discouraged to get help when I was younger. So when I got a little older, like when I was in my teenage years, those were some of the worst years of my life. I was going to school, I was getting bullied, rumors were going around about me, most of them weren't true. And and it was just a it was just a un I can't even describe how painful. And I didn't have any I have friends and stuff, but I couldn't just talk to people, like just someone to talk to how I really really felt. You know, I have relationships with guys, I had friendships with girls, but I couldn't really tell anybody that would understand like, hey, I feel like, I kind of feel like shit. Only a very few people actually listened to me and understood where I was coming from. But everyone else kept saying, oh, you need to just do this and you need to just do that. And you need to just get yourself together. And I did, I did well in school. I did everything. I listened to the advice. I did everything right. But yeah, I was still depressed and still miserable. But no one could tell me why. Oh, you're just ungrateful. You're just ungrateful for the things you have. You just refuse to appreciate anything. See, this is the type of shit. This is the mind control. I'm about to tell you some real shit right now. 
because I'm 28 right now, it took a long time just for me to realize the mind control I was in. Because sometimes when you're in a situation, when you're young, and you can't really talk back to your elders, even elders that treat you like crap, not my grandparents, by the way, they were great people, but other people in your family that treat you terribly and all they do is talk about you and don't want to get to the bottom as to what's really wrong with you, right? And offer some help and some solutions. No, that's what I went through in my life. That's exactly why I moved out very young and, and had to get away because not because I'm this horrible piece of shit child not raised properly because these are the things that were said about me and I'm just going to talk about it because it has to be talked about. It's because I was miserable, not because I wasn't appreciative of what I had. I had a great, I lived in a nice house in a nice area, you know, I went to a decent school, whatever. But that's not why I'm complaining and I'm, I'm sad. It doesn't matter where you live. It really doesn't matter what school you go to. It doesn't matter how much money you have because I didn't even have that much money anyway. If you're not around loving people who we talk about our problems. Oh, that sounds so gay. Who does that anymore, right? That was put down. It's all about let's succeed and get money and, and make, you know, all this stuff. Like, first of all, I'm a female. I wasn't treated like a female. I was treated like a boy. Let's just be real. I'm just going to keep it real. I was raised like I, like a man would be raised, which is fine because you got to have the masculine and the feminine energy. But I was raised like a boy, treated, ch uh, ch tr um, taught to suppress my emotions and just make moves and bust moves and, and be successful, which is fine. But nobody took the time to talk about why my, why such and such wasn't in my life. Why was such and such saying stuff like this to me? Nobody ever said nothing like that to me. So I did erratic, crazy things when I was in my early 20s. I did crazy things on social media. I did crazy things that I couldn't even understand why. Then people make fun of that, don't understand. But when I actually look back and see like, wow, I was, a, I was just a miserable, miserable person. I was very sad. I was happy. There were things that made me happy, like studying astronomy and spirituality and art. Those things saved my life, for real. But when you don't have anyone to talk to, see, nobody encouraged me to get therapy. You know, I had to just really stop giving a fuck about what people thought was best for me and actually say, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to do what I got to do to get right. Because... Obviously, no one gives a fuck about how I feel about anything. All people care about is my status in society. Am I going to be an artist and just be a bum-ass bitch the rest of my life? Or am I going to just do what everyone else wants me to do? I've, I've worked the office jobs. I've done well in school. I was even valedictorian in one of my schools. I did everything, but was still miserable. Because that's the suppression of the feminine. So I have good work ethic and all this stuff. So I'm not worried about people calling me lazy and all this bullshit because that's not true. It's just I, I did not deal with my emotions properly. And the older I get, the more my emotions are like a fierce beast. I cannot neglect them anymore. So this message is for people who went through stuff I went through that grew up in a family that they didn't really encourage therapy and group and healing and things like that. All they encouraged was getting your shit together, which I get it. That is an aspect. We, we live in a world where we have to work. We got to get money. We have to have success. I get it. I totally do. I'm not saying that that is not important, but what also is important is the nurturing, the, the healing, the love, the, you know, that kind of stuff is extremely important. That's why there's a lot of people who, yeah, they got a lot of money, but they don't have no heart. They don't have no soul. They're just a rope. They're like robotic. If you don't do things that are logically sound, then they put you down for that. Oh, you want to go for a walk or you want to, you know, see a counselor. What's you're not making money. You're paying someone to talk to, to for your problems. That's how a logical person thinks, but they're not thinking about, you know, first of all, a lot of these therapists out here, you don't even need to pay them. There's programs out here that will help you get therapy for free. That's one. And two, it's like, 
So why would you want to sit down and talk to someone about your problems? Is some of these logical types or these prideful, egotistical types that I can't fucking stand that suppress the feminine energy, okay? Why, why is it so wrong to go to a counselor if you're not, like, nobody I'm talking to is understanding or willing to help? then I have to do what the fuck I got to do for myself, right? So this is for people that were in those types of families where they see nurturing yourself and caring about your own emotions is looked down upon if you're not making that money or going to this kind of school or dressing this kind of way or being amazing and perfect in society. You know, they suppress people who, who, who say, wait a second, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing my schoolwork. I'm, I'm going to school. But what about the bullying? What about the loneliness? What about the sadness? What about the, the pain in my heart? Why can't I take time to deal with that? And I'm seen as weak. I'm seen as less than, than somebody. I mean, I, I'm tired of people like that. I really am. So I always encourage people, if, you, if you're in a family and you're young, because see, I'm 28 right now, I don't give a, I'm at a point where I don't give a fuck about anybody's opinion. People's opinion are just like dog shit to me. It, I'm sorry that sounds kind of fucked up, but through a, 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 a majority of my life, I was such a people pleaser. I tried to make everyone happy but myself. I was a doormat. I was, I was kind of weak, if you really want to be honest. I had a weak heart because I always, because of that trauma... I suffered from when I was younger and I had missing family members in my life that weren't there for me from the beginning. That created a void, a trauma. A lot of a lot of children who don't have their parents, they end up like people pleasers. They always want to they always want people to like them because of that abandonment issues. So it's like if you need help and your family has the nerve to tell you that oh going to a psychiatrist just makes like our it's just going to make us look bad. And, and all they care about is their reputation and how they look. Those people are just pieces of shit. You get your help. You do what you got to do for yourself because it's your life. You know, God wants us to be, to be healed in our heart. The, uh, the, the higher beings, they don't want to sit us, sit here and watch us suffer because of pride. You know how many people suffer in silence because of pride? I'm about to raise my hand. I'm one of them. Too much pride, too much ego, too much trying to prove to people I'm not fucking broken, but it's clear as day I'm a broken person. It's clear. You can see it on my social media. That's why I had to shut it down because that was a messed up version of myself. That's not who I am. And I see a lot of people on social media with alters being expressed through their social media and, and digital versions of their self that are not real. And... I always tell people, look, if people put you down because you want to take time to heal and get right with your emotions, um, there's nothing wrong with that. You, Of course you want to be successful and make money and get a job, but what's the point of doing all that if you're miserable all the time? Like, can someone please fucking answer this question? So I made a lot of money. I'm just speaking from experience. I made a lot of money. You know, I'm proving, yes, I, I can do this. Yeah, I'm not lazy. I'm not a piece of shit. Because it's hard working a job when you're, you're constantly miserable, you know. But I did it. Because, you know, some people, they're entrepreneurs. They don't like to get up every day at the same time and, and get up for someone else's dream. And there's nothing wrong with people who do that if they like their job. But it's like there are people that, that want to approach life differently. And just because you're different... I'm just speaking to people who can understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying everyone is like me, but for people who can agree to what I'm saying or, or can relate, um, you got to just do what's best for you. You know, you can't just listen. My biggest problem in my life, the way I was treated in my life and bullied was, was completely unacceptable, but the way I went about it was all my fault and all wrong. I should have just said, fuck people a long time ago. I wish when I was younger that I had the strength to just say fuck everyone, but I still, because of that trauma of not having the nurturing and the love from, you know, certain family members that I was supposed to have, but I was getting that from, from you know, my grandparents, but, you know, even if you don't have your parents, that can really mess you up even from the beginning. 
and the bullying and the not having anyone to talk to, that can create a lot of problems in your life. And if you have a situation like that where everyone around you is, is calling you crazy because you want to seek help and get your shit together emotionally, you don't need to be around those fucking people. You need to just get find a way to get the fuck out of there. And I understand financially restrictive situations where it's like you, you're living with people who are completely miserable and horrible towards you, but you don't have the money to get out of there. I'll just speak from experience. I had to take jobs I hated just to get the fuck out of where I was. I had to work jobs where I had to work two jobs at one point that I that I didn't like. But you know what? I'd rather work a job living, coming back to, to a house where I have peace than be constantly living with people where they're putting me down on a constant basis. And I'm also an artist. So picking this kind of career, of course, people are going to be like, you're like, like I say, hey, hey, guys, I want to be an artist. It's like puts a sickness in the people's mouth around me. Like you want to be an artist. That's like the worst thing a, a parent could ever hear. You know, you want to be a bum ass bitch for the rest of your life drawing cartoons <laughs> like oh my god i'm telling the fucking truth right now people might be like you're over dramatic you're so you're such a drama queen i'm just keeping it 100 on my channel i'm an artist and i'm a cartoonist and just hearing that it's telling someone you want to be an artist it's just like it's just it's everyone around you there's just like awkward silence like she doesn't want to go to college. She doesn't want to like work in an office somewhere like the rest of the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I chose a tough, tough path. Trust me, guys. I went through a lot with this path. And also, I did not sell out to the casting couch. I didn't sell out. That's why I'm struggling. But I'd rather do this and struggle and speak my truth than get on that casting couch and sell out to the, the dark forces because I have been approached. From I'm talking from experience to say no, this is not for views. I always tell people, I don't just say shit. Like whatever I was doing on my Facebook a, a, a while back, that was just all bullshit. Like I'm just gonna keep it real. A lot of that stuff was not me. It was just me doing a social experiment, trying to figure out where people's minds were at. Because every time I talked about truth, I didn't get as much attention as I needed to get this this information out. But when I talk about some ratchet bullshit or put some ratchet shit together, I got more attention. So then I just said, you know what? I got to stop the bullshit because God and my spirit were getting mad with me. Brooke, stop the bullshit on your fucking social media and get right. And I said, you know what? I'm going to get right. I'm going to stop this bullshit. If I only have two people listening to me with this truth, I'd rather have that than do some dumb shit and bullshit just to get people just butts in the seats. I'm not doing that. I'm not selling out anymore. I'm not selling out. I will say my truth and speak my mind the way I want to do it, being an entrepreneur, having my own business and just doing it, just grinding, just grinding like everyone else out here. I'm not selling out to bullshit. I'm not bending over. I'm not getting on the casting couch. I'm not going to just put silly ass bullshit ass shit on the internet for likes. I'm not doing this shit. I'm talking about real shit. I decided I want to be an artist. I didn't get a lot of support. I went to therapy. I went to group. Not because I'm weak. Oh, you're so weak. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that noise. If you need to get help and you need to get around, get away from the people you're around because they keep putting you down for who you are because you're different or whatever the case may be. I was a nerd. I'm a nerd, an artist, and a truth seeker. And that doesn't sit well with a lot of people because I talk to people. I'd be telling them about demons and I'd be telling them about aliens and they're looking at me like I need to make another appointment to the psychiatrist and shit. Like, I'm not saying this because it's cool and I want to sound different. I'm talking truth. This is shit I actually went through. I lived in a haunted house. I know what I'm fucking talking about. I saw the shadows. Why are people acting like they didn't see that shit? I went to the psychic. The psychic told me everyone in my family knows about this shit, but everyone want to look like look at me like I'm crazy. Because I have the balls to say something about it. I'm tired of being a doormat. I'm tired of holding my tongue. I want to just talk the fucking truth. I'm, I don't, I'm not getting any fucking younger. I'm just not. At least before I die, I could say, you know what? I at least have some balls to say the truth and get the help that I needed in my life. Because I need that, that emotional. I need good people around me that put light in my heart. That's what you need. You don't need people around you to keep telling you, why are you trying to be an artist? Why are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? Or it's not even just art. What if you grow up in a family where you want to be 
uh, you want to play sports, but your family wants you to be an artist. You know, just your family always does. Isn't it? Doesn't it sound? Isn't it weird that every time you want to do something, everyone's opposed to what you want to fucking do all the goddamn time? Like, why can't I just fucking be myself? What the hell? I mean, the family always got has to be in opposition to what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Why does it always got to be like that? Oh, you came out of me, so you got to do what I say. That's not true. Don't Your parents don't always know what's best for you. You got to understand that. You got to do what you want to do. What's in your heart. As long as it's, it's positive and it doesn't hurt anybody, you should have the right to do whatever the fuck you want to do, no matter what your people in your family believe in. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way it should be. You should not sit there and there are p- children that are traumatized. Like if they don't please their parents or honor their parents, they kill themselves. There are people that commit suicide because they can't please everyone. And when they can't please everyone, they kill themselves. And the people who they're trying to please don't even give a fuck about them in the first place. I'm keeping it 100. I don't care. You can say, oh, but you're supposed to honor your parents. Get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. Not everyone's parents are good people. Just because you come out of someone's pussy and come out of someone's balls doesn't mean they're good people. I'm just keeping it 100. I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm really tired of the bullshit. Honor thy parents and all these bullshit religions. What if you come from parents that abuse you and treat you like garbage? You're supposed to honor that? No, you're not. Everyone has the right to be loved in this evil world. There is love in this world, but there's a lot of evil and there's a lot of darkness. Everyone has the right to seek light, okay? I'm sorry I'm ranting. It's just this this is just a personal thing that I've been going through for so long. And I'm not around these people anymore at all. And I've seen the change. Once I got away from the bad environment and the bad... I've, I've encountered a lot of negative people in my life that didn't have my best interest in mind. You can't be nice to everyone. That's why I messed up. I can't, you can't, you can't be nice to everyone. You try to be kind and nice to everyone, but not everyone gives a crap about you. You got to just protect yourself and protect your heart and do what's best for you. As long as you're not harming yourself and others, do what's best for you. And don't let people tell you, oh, you can't do this because you're not this and you're not that. Don't, don't let people do that to you. Just because you don't please your parents or please your family or whatever, that it don't mean nothing. Your spiritual journey has nothing to do with your past. It's all up to you. The people in your life, they're just we're just like in a play. And there's just different characters around you. Not to say that you don't love the people you're around or you know, you don't build wonderful relationships with the people you grew up with. I'm, I'm not saying that, but you have to understand the world is just a stage. Physicality is just a stage and there's just people, there's actors and they come and they go. Don't be, don't, don't put yourself down because you can't get it everything right for everyone. You're not here for everyone. You're here for you. Cause when you die and you review your life and you speak to the, the higher beings and the extraterrestrials and you speak to God or whatever you believe in, but I'm just talking from spirituality cause I'm not religious. When you, when you get to that point of death, it, all that's going to matter is you. It's not going to, all that bullshit little petty ass shit that happens in your life. That don't mean shit when it, when you, it comes to the time of death. All that matters is what did you learn? Your, our, our purpose on this earth is to learn what love is and what it isn't. I already know what it's not. I've been learned that shit. All right. I know what it's not anymore. I'm not very trusting of people. You have to earn my, you have to earn my, my friendship. I, I can't, people, I try to be nice to everyone. You, ju- you just can't do that. You have to be smart. You can be kind and respectful to people, but you got to make sure that you don't hang around people that put you down and take your energy. I made that mistake. And once I made those changes in my life, my life just became normal again. It became normal and everything made sense. And I became the person that I should be, which is a balanced, happy, normal person. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to wrap this up here because my phone's dying, but I'm sorry I'm ranting. I know my voice probably sounds annoying when I'm talking very loud. I know I have a very funny voice. I've been told I have a very funny voice. I said I was told like, um, oh, I'm black, but I sound white or I have a very cartoony, weird, annoying sounding voice. Like, I don't care if my voice sounds annoying and I don't care if my voice is pleasing to you. This information is going to come out regardless. And if you can't fucking stand my voice, look at my art. And if you can't fucking stand my art, then I'll write something down for you. And if you can't stand me, period, just get the fuck off my page. That's the part. That's the point that I'm at right now. 
I'm not saying this stuff for people who can't stand me. I'm saying this stuff for people who are who who are going through the stuff that I went through when I was younger. My biggest mistake was not just listening to my heart and just just following my own beat, following my own tune. No matter what people think about me, call me names and stuff. People are gonna call you. I'm gonna give you some real advice, some wisdom here. People are gonna call you names and push you down even after you're dead. Okay, even after you're dead, you don't you don't operate your life based on the bullshit that people say about you. You operate your life based on your heart and the most high and doing positive work and connecting to loving beings and connecting the truth. That's what life is about. It's not about the other shit. But guys, I'm going to wrap it up here and I'm going to call it a day with this. Right now I'm working on another project, so I'm excited. But guys, thank you. If you guys really like my stuff, please like and subscribe. This could really help save someone's life because when I was growing up, we didn't have YouTube or anything. I just had to deal with stuff. And I'm so thankful for YouTube because so many truthers and so many people have come out and saved my life with their with their insight and their information and their and their research. And it helped me so much to, to keep going and keep fighting because this world can be a very dark place if you don't have other people brave enough to come out and speak their truth about what they went through in their life. So I hope someone can be helped with this information. Thank you.